Yeah, this is fine. Hello, everyone. Oh. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is my play button? There we go. Cool. Wait. That's too far into it. Hold on. Nope. That's the tail end. Perfect. We're right there. Sorry. I was... I was... Oh, man. Where's my glove? Crap on a crutch. <clears throat> <laughs> How y'all doing today? I was in the middle of setting up when I got interrupted for another sort of side mission or from a kindly quest giver. My grandmother. My grandmother needed something. All right, there. I just said it. And I spent about an hour doing that. I would have started this earlier, but... Okay, sarah, sarah. Ah, this is basically me reskinning um, Princess Melanie. I have a file, a PSD file, of uh, just a, what I use with the, um, oh, what do you call it? Let's see, I've got PPR Live and Cubism 2D, basically just whatever you use to make a, a VTuber. And so I'm just gonna. I spent one night reskinning her for uh, the wonderful 101 playthrough, and that's just damn. It takes a lot to actually. I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just slap this on right there, and we'll be fine. Uh, takes a little while to sort of uh, readjust your images, and it takes a, a good chunk of to add it all back into the to uh, your your actual VTuber file. I It took me, like... There are extra pieces I had to delete, and I had to add new ones, and I didn't label anything. That's the issue. Uh, I think most of, like, the stuff that you do when you get on a professional level is just future-proofing stuff, which is that if I were smart... I would have labeled all my deformer bones, which I haven't done, and I would have labeled or made extra ones that I could slip new pieces into, which I haven't done. Um, so, yeah, live and learn. Ugh. But anyway, this is fun, and this, and I do now. Now I know that I could easily. I did this one other time with. Oh, did I ever do it? The Adult Swim t-shirt? I think I did. I was playing, um, whatever, that one Adult Swim game that that one fan gave me. It was, uh, it was that weird surreal one that came in five chapters. Anyway, I managed to, like, put a t-shirt on her that just said Adult Swim on it. And it was pretty good. Anyone out there in TV land? No? Okay. Whatever. And is the jazz music playing? No, it's not. Okay. There we go. There we go. We got a nice little background music now. Very cool. Okay, that's working there. Got to set this up on my other computer so I can get this done. Damn it. Okay. Hello, Alter. How's it going? Why Why are you all the way up there? Huh. That's weird. My chat usually... The new things show up at the bottom. Oh, well. Anyway, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I have it saved as title card. Is that right? Hmm. Just wait. Yeah. 
working with two mice is. By the way, I still I still have that offer with uh, making you a, a little VTuber thing if you want. I can either make a sound puppet, which is what Melanie started out as, or a sound puppet hybrid. You're probably wondering what that green thing is on her face, and that's just basically her upper lip. And it hides her lower lip and her mouth when she opens and shuts her mouth. Uh, this is because um, Cubism and uh, PR Live have no function that can actually monitor the sound of your voice, much like I'm doing now. In OBS, you can switch on something called a, uh, it just basically, it, it connects sound to movement. And you can bounce, you can bounce slowly, or you can set it to bounce fast. I, a mouth usually opens and shuts faster. Um, but then you could do it so that you kind of float a little bit, like my, like my avatar. Um... They, there's no such ability to program a VTuber in those programs alone uh, to do it that way. So I had to do a mixture of what I originally did with um, Princess Melanie. And that's just put her face, her upper face, her, her lip, and then her lower lip are separate away from her model. Let's see if I can actually... No, I, I can't. Um... Actually, yeah, maybe I can. Here. Let me open that shit up, and let's see. Oh, and by the way, you can curse now. Again. YouTube said it was okay. Let's see. I'm opening up. Hmm. I also didn't have any lunch, so I'm eating some chips. Sorry. Uh... Yeah. Let me see if I can get a picture of this. Okay. Hold on, getting a screen grab. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't care. Just rename it. You're a new untitled. Okay, so anyway. This is what it looks like. Um, Yeah, basically that's her main body. And the main body is just rigged regularly. She can move left and right. You know, her, her, her boobs jiggle. Her hands are different layers. There's about six or seven different hand poses that um, her, her, her fingers flick and the thumbs press down, depending on where she is on the screen. If I go a little bit left, she'll, like, thumb through a bunch of her different frames. It gives her the illusion that she's actually, you know, pressing the buttons as, we, as I move along. Um, and it's connected to the mouse. Which means if I, I go from one direction to the other, she'll follow. Her eyes are also rigged to follow the mouse whenever I, I flip a switch. But as you can see, her mouth and her her bottom mouth, her teeth, are on a separate sort of... Just like further away from her body. They should actually be further, way further away. Because whenever I change her model, there's a lot of extra space. Uh, that you'll see soon, because I put her hair into these kind of little uh, ponytail vine things for this outfit, and they get in the way. So it's a combination of the two. Uh, that way I don't need a camera. Um, actually, I, I tested it out. My computer is strong enough to run a camera now to, uh, to capture. Uh, positioning, but I don't want to do it because uh, you got to light yourself just right 
it's easier just to kind of turn it on, flick it on, and then just use the mouse and the controls to kind of control your character. The only setback is, is that you can't control your facial expressions to cor correlate with your facial expressions. But that's okay, because most VTubers, they don't do that anyway. I mean, they try, they, they do, but it's not good. Most of them are just like the blank stares anyway. And of course, I went with, uh, I specifically went with sort of that um, Rankin Bass perma smile sort of thing to make it look like where the, the mouth can just go in and out. And then you can use the eyes to change your expressions real vividly. Mm, ba -ba -ba. Okay, I gotta. I gotta take care of this. Nope, don't want that. No, no, stop. Talking to my other computer. So anyway, this is for 101, a game I'm enjoying, although... Boy, is it also a pain in the ass. That game is a little too ambitious for its own good at times. And it can really, really just get annoying. Especially since I'm playing on the PS4, I assume if I was playing it on the Wii. On the Wii it would have been a lot slower, I, I assume. But on the PS4, it, it's literally not made for, for that console. Like... It's meant to have a little screen that I could put my finger on and then draw on the little screen, the shapes. Uh, you can move, you can do that with the touchpad, and you can do that with the stick. However, I can never tell where's my starting position when I'm start to draw. So and there are points, especially later on in the game, where you're just like. I'm drawing blindly. I don't know what I'm I'm actually making. And the the shapes overlap sometimes. You try to make a gun and it 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 just makes a whip anyway and you're like, well, "How did that happen?" Also, uh when you try to make shapes in in the actual gameplay itself, like walls stop you from moving or they change your direction. So you're like, "Okay, I need to make a gun." But I'm standing right next to this wall, so I'm going straight up to the wall, and it's it's not registering. Like, what's the best Platinum game? W would that, like... I know Bayonetta is also a little bit janky, at least the, the first one. The second one, they got the formula down pat. Third one, I've heard problems about the... I heard problems about the... Some of the gameplay is redundant. Some of the story is a little weird. Um, and also, they, like, they made it like a Devil May Cry game, like halfway through the actual uh, uh, production. Like, what do you think is the quintessential Platinum game? There's not, I don't know. Revengeance seems pretty cool. I've watched a number of playthroughs on that, and I'd like to give that a shot. Let's see. That's set up. That's set up. Okay. Hello, is this thing on? Allez-vous, Francais? Let's see. Uh... Let me get some references here. Hmm. 
Go. Okay, I'm just working on my other computer here. Also, it's a little hard. I'm basically just reskinning this character, or I'm reskinning Melanie just from from basically nothing. I'm just like I'm freestyling. Uh, the smart thing would have been to actually make a sketch, which I I did, and I'm sort of working off of. You can't see it, but it's it's just like it's in my uh, reference. Bin. Let's see if I know. Come on. No, Cortana. I don't want it. I don't want you. Control, copy. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, start. Uh, why isn't it stopping? Okay, OBS, what do you got for me now? Profile. Advanced scene switcher is inactive. Who the hell did that? There we go. Okay. Oh, you're not. Okay, I have to reprogram advanced scene switcher. Great. Let's see. What's my micro? Oh, I have no macros. Well, crap. Okay. That's another thing. Boy, it's just, if it's not one thing, it's another. That's okay. It keeps us on our toes. Boom. Boo, 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 boo. What am I doing? Okay, first of all. Macro 1. I have a system set up for my drawing that, that helps me do uh, speed drawings. And you go into OBS, and you go into your advanced scene switcher. I'm just talking about my, my step-by-steps. I can't show you because it's on a different computer. Also, there are much better tutorials. You need to download a bunch of different programs for this. But let's see. I've got one macro if... Cursor is if cursor is moving, then recording, recording. Recording. Then unpause recording. Groovy. And then make a copy of that. And if not, cursor is moving. Pause recording. There you go. Hopefully that works. Yeah, I got seven watchers, but no one's commenting. It's kind of making it a little bit hard for me to keep the conversation up. But I'll do it. Oh, there you guys are. You son YouTube, you son of a bitch. Here. There you guys. God, you're all right here, damn it. Hiya, Sin. Hiya, Omar. Damn it. Why didn't it look... I had to pop it out into the... I had to pop it out and then pop it back in. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to leave it out because I think it's going to freeze up again if I just... There. Uh, I don't know many platinum titles. Infamous Second Son. No. No. And sad part about Bayonetta Ride is all three games are not connected. They have their own separate continuities and alternate universes. Yeah, I heard about that. Okay. Io16, how you doing? Yeah, I can see your chat now. Damn it, YouTube.
A Hat in Time. I think I may have that on stream. Steam, not stream. Let's see. Ah, oh, so much better. But I don't have the... Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have... Yeah, we discussed this. Shit. Um, anyway, see you, Alter. You take care. Okay, as you can see here, Melanie's uh, head and body, lower body, are disconnected. That means her... She can move her hips and her upper chest in different directions whenever she's moving. They were one solid piece, and then when I realized what was going... There, there's that sketch. When I realized what was going on, I had to, like, cut them in half, and then just uh, use the boobies as a as a kind of, uh, well, band-aid, really. They are load-bearing bosoms. Ooh, cool. Anima animatics. Okay, let's see now. Let's see. Okay, I think I can start. While I'm doing this, I am finishing up that, um... I am finishing up the Rachel Big Head title card. While we work- while I work on this. Okay, start recording. Beautiful. Beautiful! Okay, we're all set. It's working now. And another thing they announced, they're trying to get a season four of Cuphead show. Oh, good. Well, actually, that was only a season one. I hate to believe... I, I, I talked about this in uh, my Cuphead video. They originally, like, really screwed over a bunch of the, uh, the production by making it so... Let's see. I want this in here. The line art goes in here. What are all these extra layers? Okay, I'm just... I'm talking to myself. Um... Okay, there. And then that'll be the color layer. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah, they... It was originally, like, the work of three seasons. But they only ordered the one season. And, uh, like, messed up, like, the contracts of the studio. I know, Netflix being a bunch of scumbags. Boy, that really didn't take long, did it? I mean, it was almost like... It was like, wow, Netflix, they really, like, care about, you know... You know, the, 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 the production and studio and creativity, and now it's just like... <clears throat> it don't take long. I think you got maybe about 10 years tops of, uh, of, of things sort of being the creative bastion of some place. I think Cartoon Network had probably the best run. And then they went to uh, Cartoon Network Real, and then I don't think it's quite ever recovered its luster since then. I mean, don't get me wrong, they got great stuff. In Florida, it's really Disney's throats... Wait, what? In Florida, it is really at Disney's throat. Eh. Hello, Rosalina. Let's see now. Oh, that's beautiful. Covered in the thing. Oh yeah, I had to, I made her mask, and I made it too big on that side. I'm using Wonder Pink as a reference, which really she's like Wonder Fuchsia. Oh no. Come on. Okay. Uh, 
Let's see. Da, 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 da. Why are why am I invisible? I don't know. That was just a thing I did. I have just the. Uh, I thought it was just a neat little little image. I like the idea of glasses with a uh, spectralizer inside of them, and then I just created the the jacket with all the pins, which I should figure out a way to like swap those make them modular but as as they're all kind of stuck there now um and uh, i just added the hair just just because it looked weird with just the glasses okay okay there we go no no, no, no that's not the best choice Dark a little bit yeah okay that's good that's beautiful okay like I was saying, it's a little bit of a trick figuring out how to like readjust your 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 VTuber puppet. And I did not, like I said earlier, uh, I did not future proof this so that I could add uh, more more elements. It's a little easier now, But also the problem is, is that sometimes the size of what I'm adding is, 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 uh, it's too big. The file itself is a little too big. I should have recorded myself actually building the puppet, uh, rebuilding the puppet again, actually, but I, I didn't. That was just, I was just like, eh, screw it. Uh, and sometimes in life you gotta realize something. Yep. Anyway, I think after this, if I if there's no more interruptions, like what time is it? Twelve thirty. This is gonna be about maybe two hours worth of work. I think I may wanna jump on and play some Fortnite. Because I know that people are getting sick of Fortnite, but there's that one last uh, set of quests. And I may do that in the middle of the day, I don't know. I don't know, I've got everything set up out here. I've got a whole office in the garage, so that way when... When people need to take naps, they won't be interrupted by my dulcet tones in the middle of coming from the office. Uh, I asked, oh, 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 I asked in your node video if you're going to talk about Nim, Nimilus, the, mentioned important things, the idea of the Sandman. Why does she, oh, oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll answer Robbie first. Um, you know what? I could take a look at that at the time. Um, even when that was airing on Cartoon Network, uh, not Cartoon Network, I think it aired on Disney Channel. I think they aired it as a Christmas special. Um, I did not know that. Uh, you know, I didn't know the Sandman was a regular series. That uh, I guess it was a Canadian series where that where the beginning was live action. Damn it! Hold on. Uh, okay. The machine got it. Telemarketer. Um. I didn't know that was a regular series. I could take a look at it. You know, I could just jump on a... Jump on a, uh, a turret site and, and take a look at it. Which, by the way, there's no, like, official released physical... There's no physical release for that series, so sure. But why not? I now describe using turrets as in, in regards to... 
uh, your dedication, uh, like one's dedication to capitalism, uh, my 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 tenuous relationship, my open relationship with capitalism, is how I describe it when I want to watch a series that I may not have access to, or there may not be access to. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll check that out and see what it's all about. Um, hey, uh, and, and then for Rosalina, um, she's got a green mustache because I explained this earlier in the video. Uh, she is actually a hybrid between two types of puppets. Um, her main body is just a regular old, uh, come on, don't, don't, no, no, no. Her main body is just a regular VTuber body, which means that her body will move with my cursor. Um, or, if I have it rigged up, it'll move with my face. You know, her position. She's not like, she doesn't, like, has, she can't turn her head yet. Uh, maybe I'll work on that yet, now. Um, but, her mouth, um... Let's see, the programs I use for VTubing, they don't have anything related to sound. Like, my 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 avatar right now, aside from the spectralizer, it is bouncing up and down with my voice. Uh, it's similar to what, what Melanie goes through. Uh, she will... Um, the, the green basically is just a mask for green screening. It looks invisible on uh when you're just got the program running but it also hides this bottom part of her mouth the the part with the tongue and the lips and uh the upper teeth so you know she's got like a puppet mouth that bounces with my voice through obs obs controls this part this puppetry and uh the vtuber program controls where the puppet moves uh, based on pawn where I move the mouse. So, yeah, that's that's what happens. Uncle Grandpa meets the Phantom Toe Booth. That's actually a pretty good description. So anyway, yeah, to answer your question again, that's the, that's the uh, green screen cover for the top and bottom of her mouth. Or just the top of her mouth. It kind of does, doesn't it? Especially with the mask on now. Uh, but anyway, yeah. The the mouth... If if they came out with a way for just just to run it with audio, which they do, but they the way they run it with... Uh, the way that program, the uh, PR, PR Live... The way it runs, it's based on vowel sounds. And I just want it to go open and shut. Open and shut. Uh, and it doesn't do that. It does it, but it does it in a really, really janky way. So what I've just elected to do is create, again, that hybrid puppet that uses uh, the sound movement in OBS and just, you know, all the other movement uh, options in their program. <laughs> Who's going to watch Minutemen's um, Ancient Apocalypse uh, Part 2? I've been watching a lot of Minutemen, who is a uh, YouTube channel about archaeology. Like he is, to, he is to archaeology what uh, um, illegal legal is to legal law on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Do you watch Hell of a Boss? I've I've catched I've uh, watched a few episodes here and there. 
uh, whenever it just kind of pops up on the channel or my feed. But yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty good. Production-wise. Let's see, I think what I want to do is make this gray. to do fade these colors out in the background do 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 who's your favorite character i'm uh luna is pretty pretty boss she's pretty cool i'd say she's like the actual best character design in this in the series a little uh pentagram on the holding up the chest or her 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 shirt together is like actually really inspiring Because okay, she's got a great voice actress. Maybe if they gave her a little bit more character. I've drawn a Luna. I did for Halloween. darker. There we go. Beautiful. Um, let's see. What's my favorite episode? I kind of like the ranch one just because uh I do like um uh, uh, uh Moxie and uh Millie. I do think they are pretty adorable together. The cherub one is also pretty, pretty okay too. Where's my, where's my bucket? Okay, there it's right there it is. And da, 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 specific layer. What the hell is going on with this shit? Just wait, I'm doing, having a problem. Okay, here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Much better. 
Brain Broken is my your favorite episode. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that's the most Veronica, uh, Verosica heavy one. Let's see now. Okay, okay. I don't think I want. Maybe I'll change that color to something a little bit along the lines of. Do, 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 do. Who's my favorite Mario character? Well, to play as, um, like, I God, I remember playing Super Mario Brothers two, and I always chose uh, Peach because she had the longest jump. And I like, um, I like the air control that you got with it. Uh, what was, uh, Mar uh, let's see, I think Mario was, like, a normal character. I think Luigi jumped the highest. And then Peach could float. What was Toad good at? Was he, like, the strongest? Or was he the fastest? I like Wendy. I think she's the cutest uh, Koopa Ling. Um And I, I actually like really dig the sort of child relationship that uh, uh, Toad could run really fast. That makes sense. I was gonna say he he shouldn't have been able to be the strongest. Uh, but basically Bowser Jr. and Bowser, like the little relationship that they got going on there, the the, the kind of wholesome father son thing they've got now. I love playing the Super Mario Brothers games. Never really got into any other ones, except the Mega Man. Okay, uh, yeah, I was going to say. I never got into Zelda. Zelda I got into finally when I got a Super Nintendo. Um, and that was even, like, much later in the, like, Nintendo's life cycle. Or the Super Nintendo's life cycle. And the, uh, the 64 was already out. Is this okay good should be able to erase this it's on a different layer okay oh yeah yoshi was great everyone lost their shit when yoshi first popped up i was like oh my gosh it's another character you can ride on them
I think that was like my first Mario Gate that game that I beat all on my own. Oh wait, actually no, that was Super Mario Brothers 3. I beat that all on my own too. You know, without needing any help from like an older cousin or anything like that. Oh, uh, what I was using there was the, um, the, uh, symmetric tool in, uh, Paint Tool Seiya. Paint Tool Seiya doesn't have many features. It's got the best pen uh, out of any program I've ever seen. And, uh, they do have some nice, uh, perspective rulers. And also, you know, the symmetric tool, uh, the ruler is actually really, really handy. For, like, making different shapes and keeping them perfectly mirrored. You can even make spiral graphs if you want. Let's see, what do I want to do? I know. I need to put the yellow things on her, her outfit and dress. Okay, what's my favorite Super Mario Brothers game? Why, Mario Hotel, of course! No, um... Gosh. I would say, yeah, Super Mario Brothers 3 was great. Um... Mario 64 was fine for the time. I would have to say... Yeah, 3 is pretty much the model uh, of which all of those were... All the... Even the new ones are based on. Um, I mean, excluding, like, all the weird ones with the, like, the cat suits and everything. I really got to think about that. Two was pretty neat, just because it was a different for its uh, the formula. And do you include the RPG? I wouldn't think so. It's a great game, but I wouldn't know if it was like a fantastic Mario game. It's more like a reskin of a Final Fantasy game. Let's see. Uh, Galaxy was pretty, pretty good. It was actually, like, really, really good. I had a... That, that was, like, the last Nintendo product I had. Was a, a Wii. And, uh... I did enjoy that game a lot. I also saved the par Mario Party games. Wouldn't count. You're talking about, like, the core games, like Run and Jump Man. Um, yeah, I'm still going to go with 3, just because I know it's old and it's old-timey, but I, I, it's still pretty... It, 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 it set the pace for the rest of the series going forward, I would have to say. And I'd actually say it's a little bit more difficult than uh, World. Oh, well, yeah, Super uh, Paper Mario 2 is fantastic. But again, uh, would, I, uh, would I put that in the core series? Um, maybe not. Maybe not.
Oh, this crown. Um, when I was uh, shoving more stuff, or not shoving, uh, it felt like shoving. But when I was uh, converting all these into um, into the model, this crown really held me up. I didn't realize that I had to uh, reset the meshes in the program. So this one's a little bit bigger than the crown. And it, it sort of sticks out of the borders of it. So a lot of these pieces were actually cut off when I uh, re-imported them into the file that I wanted to work with. So it was just like, ugh. Oh, they got little Sonic emojis too. Uh, my favorite Sonic character. Who play as um, Sonic, of course. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed those Sonic... Uh, Tails levels are, are are okay. Knuckles are fine. They're like scavenger hunts. Um. Yeah, Tails. I mean, not, I mean, uh, yeah, Sonic. Sonic is the main one in every game. I mean, pretty much. Uh, my favorite Sonic character, I would have to say, I was really. Um, there was a there was a run in the comics where I really got into uh. Uh, Sally's sort of um, the dynamic she had with like like her being royalty and the expectations her father and all the other people had around for her even though they were the ones that kind of led to the world being screwed up I mean they didn't help Robotnik but they you know ended up being so uh just, just so useless as to almost help him. And, uh... Let's see, was Ken Penders writing these at the time? I guess he may have, or may not. There's some issue whether or not he he was... People were ghostwriting for him on certain stories. Um... But anyway, before he went absolutely nuts uh he was an okay writer it, in terms of like it was it was just, it was soap it was like soap operas it was like it was like my stories uh but basically just for like a a young preteen cr um that bunny rabbits Pretty awesome. I'm trying to... Uh, someone other than the SMAT crowd. Uh, I love Scratch and Grounder. I know that series gets kind of ragged on. But I always thought it, of it as the more creative of the two uh, dueling Sonic cartoons at the time. Just because... Just because it, it, it... First of all, it had jokes, which require... Uh, set up, you know, set up and pay off. And like, even though it was ripping off Bugs Bunny or whatever, uh, they were still pretty good. And, um, what's his face is Robotnik. Um, I was going to say that voice actor, he was sort of a, uh, musician at the time before he went there. He's dead now, unfortunately, very unfortunate. He was a fantastic voice actor. I think he may have uh, died from, uh, throat cancer. Of all things. Uh, Sonic... Ad no, wait. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Of Sonic the Hedgehog. Robotnik. There's even a song that he has. He was a, he was a professional singer. Okay. Genres. Scratch, that's Phil Hayes' is Scratch. Grounder, come on. Oh, Long John Baldry? Baldry? B-A-L-D-R-Y. Yeah, they've even got his, uh... They've even got his, his thing up here. I guess he was a Canadian folk singer. 
uh, let's see. Let's look up his um, John William Bon John Baldry. In the 1960s, he was one of the first British vocalists to sing the blues. Okay, so he was a British blues man. Uh, shared stages with the Rolling Stone, Rod Stewart, Elton John. Uh, he enjoyed a pop success with Let Heart Aches Begin. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, he was a pretty, not bad looking man. Uh, personal life, I believe he, yeah, he was openly gay. Uh, he did not make it formally public until the 1970s. Do, 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 do. Yeah, they had, and that's like, that's just like four years or three years after, uh, Britain, um, uh, quit their, uh, their, their, their criminal offenses against homosexuality. Uh, 1968, he tried to commit suicide. Aw, oh, shit. Poor guy. Uh, during the 1960s, depression. Oh, this is sad. Oh, he had developed spinal osteoporosis. And, uh, need, okay, he underwent hip replacement. 2005 is when he died. With a chest infection. Okay, not throat cancer, but uh, pneumonia. Okay, shit. And his body had developed an antibiotic resistance because of all the the different surgeries he went through. Well, f crap. Uh, let's see. He had a fi he had a pretty decent film career. Uh, lots of, uh, voiceover stuff. He played in Captain N, the Game Master, King Charles, Little John, uh, Dragon Warrior, narrator. Dragon Warrior? As in the bl little blob thing? Did that have a TV series? Dragon Warrior in North America. Wait, there was a Dragon War- there was a Dragon Quest TV series. Oh, man. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, hey, hey, Robbie. He was, uh, he was the Sandman. He played the Sandman in the TV. Okay, so it was a TV special. The Boy Who Dreamed of Christmas. So it was a TV special. Then he played Dr. Robotnik in, uh, 65 episodes. Then he played in Madeline. He did one episode Reboot, he was Old Man Pearson and Captain Capacitor. Uh, do, 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 do. I guess he did a bunch of, like, the, the Sandman episodes. Yeah, he was 20... Okay, he did 26 episodes of uh, the Sandman, so he did that. Robocop Alpha Commando. Toad Patrol as Missile Toad. Huh, and then he died two years later. Shit. Well, good on you. He's got a couple good songs out there. I was he blues, blues rock, and folk rock. So if you want to see hear Dr. Robotnik, like really have some chops, then go look up Lon John Baldery. Baldery. You would say bald and then re. Maybe I should do a familiar faces. On uh, the gentleman, and say that hey, if you want to, if you want to hear Robotnik, like really tear up, tear up a blues hall. Okay, I'll put that on the list. Where are we in the... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I had a little bit of trouble figuring out where her collar would fall. Blaze the Cat is pretty good. Let's see. Uh, how, who would I say is my new favorite of the new characters? 
Um, you know, I haven't checked out a lot about the uh, the comics, the new IDW comics. Um, but um, that wolf, the the wolf who's always got her eyes like shut, she seems pretty cool. Okay, there we go. I haven't played a new Sonic game in forever. I have uh, Sonic Mania, and I have the old Sonic games on Steam. I should give that a boot. Rock from Pokemon? Let's see. Now we're talking about Pokemon. Um, gosh, I need to actually play a Pokemon game too. I should start that. I don't know. I would always go, and you know what? I know it's cliche, but I still always like Pikachu. Um, just because I like electric power. I think that's that's pretty cool. I think half of the reason that the series actually has a lot of staying power is because Pikachu is such a like a really it's cute, but also at the same time like electricity and powerful. And, um, although I always wanted a Rapid Dash because my first episode that I really got involved with was the the race episode. The one where the Ponata evolves into a Rapidash in the middle of the race. And I was just like, oh wow, that's cool. It like really sold me. I think if I had watched any other episode in like those earlier seasons, I would have been like, well, okay, well, huh. Okay, what is this? But that was like the perfect episode to like, like, okay, well, here's what Pokemon do and and here's the benefits of evolution like evo it, like it literally evolved into a stronger character in order to win the race like what's the episode that would have kept me from Pokemon I think maybe the lighthouse one I never liked that light lighthouse one with the, the with the Dragonite or whatever. I thought that was like a really boring episode. Which you think like would be really exciting, like Team Rocket, they shoot a thing at it. And they talk about like old and ancient forces. But uh I think if I had I don't know, there's just something it just like really went like water off my back. Ash even it catches his Krabby in that episode. Which I love that Krabby. That Krabby shows up later on. It's great. You like Mr. Mime? Mr. Mime's pretty cool. 
I would always try to get a Mr. Mime in every run through. Um, let's see. Before there was Pokemon Yellow, they had I had Pokemon Blue, and um, I forget what the difference was. I think in one Pokemon they didn't have a Machop or or whatever. But I always did, uh, I like to go for Blastoise. Um, what were my other ones? I always wanted a Hunter. I always needed a Hunter in every team. So it was like, usually I would go Blastoise, a Hunter. Sometimes a Pikachu and sometimes a Magnemite. Hey Drake, how's it going? Um, for my Electric. I would always I wanted a fighting type, and I think I would always go for a Hitmon uh Hitmon Lee. No wait, Hitmon Chan. Because Hitmon Chan had the ability to learn all of those uh special punches. The special elemental punches. Hitmon Lee couldn't do that. In a weird way, I liked Hitmon Lee's design better, but I liked Hitmon Chan's moveset better. So I would always go with his. Um and then for a plant type, I would either use like a bell sprout and then evolve it into a. Uh, I could never get a victory bell because I never traded with anyone. No one ever had like an old school Game Boy that they brought to school. So I never got a victory bell. But um, Weeping Bell was decent enough. Um, that was my plant. Either that or an Oddish, but I didn't really like Oddish because Oddish couldn't like it had let's just it had the powders. And I wanted stuff like Razor Leaf and and and, and Vine Whip. Um Let's see, so let me let me recap. Hunter, Blastoise, Pikachu or Magnemite. What are my other four? Oh, I needed a fire type. I think I would I would get one. I would get a Vulpix before I would get a uh, Ponyta. Um, because Vulpixes were just came came sooner in the game. Uh, unless I would have one of those runs where I chose a Charizard, and then I'd have to figure out which water type to pick, and I uh, that would always usually be a uh, uh, a Poliwag. I don't know. I forget what my other one was. It was always a it was always a wild card. I think like an Abra. I think I really wanted an Abra. Yeah. Do 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 do. Uh, let's see now. Oh no, I gotta draw all those squares? Okay. That can't be right. I like Swirtle in Super Smash Bros. Oh yeah, that's good. Again, it's it's a little tedious than you'd think, but just repurposing all these these different body parts is time consuming.
It's my favorite Sonic game. Um, again, going back to like old school, I would say Sonic 2, or I would say, uh, I haven't played any new Sonic games. I liked Sonic Adventure for what it was back in the day. Like, I remember going to a KB toy store and seeing Sonic Adventure for the first time and being like, oh my god. Like, what is this? Not in a bad way, like a good, like a, a like knock your socks off kind of way. Which was, you know, the effect they were going for at the time. Like, they usually, they had the ad that was like, uh, a Dreamcast, it's thinking. And, like, you honestly, like, thought that. Like, oh my gosh, well, they've got, like, they've got, it's artificial intelligence. It wasn't, though, of course. Um. Yeah, between those two, I'd say that's, that's it. Sonic Pinball was really good. But again, would you call that a Sonic Mainline game? I'd maybe argue against it. Sonic Spinball? What's your favorite burger joint and what's your go-to order? Okay. Let's see. My favorite burger joint. There's a really good place called... Well, let's see. Whenever I'm running around with Grandma, she likes to go to Culver's. Whenever she needs to go to the mall out there or go to, you know, any side on, on a different side of town, she likes Culver's, which is pretty okay. Um, better than okay. Uh, it, it's really good. Um, they got good cheese, which they, they market themselves as like a, a Wisconsin restaurant. Uh, so th they better have pretty g damn good cheese. I would say... Anyway, hey, Michael. How you doing? I would say my favorite would have to be Whataburger, actually. And that's that's the chain restaurants. There's this one little place uh, that literally just is a trailer park. Or not a trailer park, just a trailer. And it, it sits about max 10 people. And there are always people going in and out to pick up their meal. Um, it's a little sit-down place. Um, and it's, it's just really good. It's really good. But if I had to go to like a chain restaurant, I would have to go to Whataburger. And, uh, my go-to is, uh, the double Whataburger, of course. And they also have really good onion rings. It's funny. I go to, like, different places for different things. Like, McDonald's, eh, I might go there. I might go there for breakfast. They're, the only thing they have there that's, like, halfway decent is the, you know, the, the Big Mac. Which, uh, you know, I can get that, that dressing anywhere I want. Um, I go to uh, Jack in the Box for either their curly fries, their milkshake, or... Their uh, tacos and their egg rolls. The tacos are fine. The tacos are not, like, you know, they're not even like actual, they're like false tacos. You know how they like, like, like they have false crabs? Those are like false tacos. They're taco shaped and they have meat in them, but I wouldn't like actually describe them as tacos. Like I live in, I live in Phoenix. I can get some good tacos. Um... I 
I can get some fantastic uh, Indian bread. Uh, the Indian Bread House is a fantastic little restaurant here, and it's amazing. Um, well, let's see. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then you go to, like... What, you've been there, Michael? That's a little too dark. Or a little too bright. I need something a little bit darker. And up a little bit, and then we got this. Booyah. Eh, still a little... Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Uh, I didn't know that it was anywhere but Texas. Um, they've had it here for years. Like, that's, like, a, like literally one of our family's favorite restaurants or go-to places. Um, it is only, a, like, I think they recently, like, went full-blown franchise, but, um, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little known secret. Out here in the southwest. Of course, I always eat hamburgers, no matter where I go. Because uh, I always say it's pretty hard to screw up a hamburger. But you know what? This last place that I went to, they they managed it because I think I got some food poisoning there. This was like maybe weeks. This is like maybe three weeks or a month ago. But I was like really like, ooh. Like I was actually like sick to my stomach. I was like one more day. One more day to going to the doctor. That's how bad it was. It was it wasn't like emergency room sick, but it was just like wow, my there's something wrong with my gut. And then it just kind of it passed. Like you're almost worried that your kidney is shutting down. That's how like it's just like a nig niggling feeling I had. Oh, my phone. Okay. Uh, it might be a Southwest thing. I think it's de I think it originated from uh, from Texas and then moved out here a little bit. I don't know if they have any in California, but they definitely have them here because there's about like four locations. Uh, what's my favorite Pixar film? Oh, a Ratatouille, of course. Right off the bat. Like, n I don't even have to blink. I love Ratatouille. I love the message of it. And I love my, I love the, uh, I love the actors in it. It's just great. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, what's your favorite knockoff Pixar movie? Hey, you know what? I saw a trailer for um, a movie called uh, The Little Alien. I don't know if it's a knockoff or not. I'm pretty sure it's a knockoff. Because the animation looks so close to, um, oh, what is it? It's, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I think I may have to actually look it up, just to be sure. And it looks like it might be, like, one of those Christian movies. 
except the the old man who is the mentor character he's got a uh earring he's he's like old and balding has long ponytail and he's got like an earring in his left ear which uh if you know anything about that uh that was the sort of the indic the inside baseball indicator that uh you were you were um part of the uh you know lgbt community at the time which i think they just called them gay at the that there was no L lgbt i mean there were but they didn't go by that name so it's like oh wait is this character like it looks like one of those cartoons that you'd see a little white dove next to it and then you'd be all like oh well And I wouldn't expect that from that. So that's what intrigues me. Uh, oh, wait, actually, what's my favorite Pixar ripoff movie? Um, I would have to say uh, Ants. Wait, no, what's the other one? What's the other one? Ants is a close second. I know there was another one where they were like, we gotta beat... We gotta be Pixar to the punch. Well, that might be the best made one, actually, now that I think about it. Wally is a fantastic. I would have to say Wally is my second favorite one. Um, and then I would go with, um, Monsters Inc. would have to be definitely would be in the top five, but I would have to say I like Incredibles too. For the animation, not the weird Iranian, Iranian, not Iranian, Iranian, uh, you know, uh, sort of mentality. Presented in the uh, in the movie. Yeah, especially it hasn't aged well. Especially with, uh, you know, Woody Allen being the lead and, and then all that stuff. Okay, I need to put that on that layer, this on this layer. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then put this on multiply. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Incredibles 2 was a weird rehash of the first movie with Helen instead of Bob. Yeah, it was not good. They, that sort of when Pixar was sliding into the whole, um... Oh, how would you put it? Like it was, it was trying to go into its, basically trying to be make make marketable movies again. Um, and then you got Coco, which was fantastic. Uh, and then Brave was fine for what it was, but it was also had like a weird scattered message, and the whole plot about the mom becoming a bear really didn't like fit in with any of that? Like, is that like an old... Is that like an old Scottish story that I don't know about? Like, like if I didn't know anything about Aladdin, would that... Would, like, even though I knew about Aladdin going into the movie Aladdin, and I was like, what, seven at the time? 
Um, I don't know. It's just it was just weird. That came out of left field. If you could be brave, would you be? Merobiba would. I wish my mom was a bear. And uh oh, Merobiba, you done it again. I'm Merobiba. I'm Merobiba. Uh, that's the um the draw feed. Wasn't red just brave too? No, no, no. Turning red was fantastic. I love turning red. That reminded me of all the like the mid two thousands uh kid shows like Recess and uh, Doug and uh, Pepper Ann. You ever walk out of a movie theater or shut off a DVD because the movie was so bad? Um, okay. I'll tell you what. I once... Uh, uh, DVDs, I do it all the time. Because who who gives a crap? You're just watching. I, I, I've done that with so many movies. I've done that with good movies that I just haven't, like, felt like watching the rest of. Um, have I ever walked out of a movie theater? Actually, you know what? I haven't. Um, I'm trying to think of like, like my worst movie experience that was tied into the movie. There's been plenty of times when I've like, I, I, I've actually felt sick. Um, and just like left. And that's like that was like during a, a and this is this is not recent. This was like as a kid. Uh, you walked out of the movie Dungle when I okay, yeah, I could see you doing that. I could definitely see you doing that. Um, Dungle was not good. Dungle was one of those things where it was just like it was on Cartoon Network in the background, and I was like, what is going on? Like it almost makes me wish like I could I'm I wanna get like an English version to see if it's like a little bit more subdued and charming. Wait, wasn't Whoopi Goldberg the dog? Wasn't she Dungle? Or am I just imagining things? Um, like what's the worst movie I've ever seen? Oh, I haven't. I didn't even walk out of Master of Disguise. I sat through that whole damn thing. I was like, it's got to get better, right? She was in it. Was she the dog? I forget. Was she the actual dog? Because I remember Dungle being like, sort of like, again, it's all British, so it's like, kind of subdued. Um, and charming. Yeah, I would have to say. Uh. Yeah, so I, I sat through, I think, I sat through Master Disguise, so. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever walked out of a movie because it was so bad. Again, I've shut it off. Um, I know my brother, he went to go see uh, Blade 2. And he was like about... He loved Blade. And then he was about maybe like... He was too young. He was definitely too young. Uh, so they walked out of that. And what was I watching? Because I went to another theater. I know there was one time that me and me, my mom and my dad and my little brother, we split up. Um, we, we split up. Dad and me wanted to go see Atlantis. And then my brother took my mom took my brother to go see Too Fast, Too Furious. And uh, I don't know. Both those, I think, have held up pretty good as a film. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Master of Disguise. I could see how you would like like it as a kid, like as like like maybe a seven year old, because Dana Carvey. I mean, he does do good voices, and he does. You know, the Turtle Club scene is probably the best scene. It's it's also horribly cringy a little bit, but it's it's the best scene in the movie. Remember that Dana Carvey show where. Uh, uh, not show, but the movie where he's got, like, amnesia or something. He's, like, a gangster with amnesia. I caught that thing, like, at 4 o'clock in the morning one day. It was, like, the weirdest thing. It was, like, Dana Carvey trying to do, like, a semi-serious role. And then there's Welcome to Mooseport. Uh, which was uh, Dana Carvey, um, what was it, Dana Carvey, oh, who, who else was in it? They were three bank robbers who ended up snowed in into this town, and they, uh, huh. Actually, I forget the plot. I think it involves them, like, turning over a new leaf, of course. After a bunch of shenanigans. My favorite DreamWorks film. Oh! Uh, Shrek 2 is the most funny, is the funniest out of all of them. But I would have to say, uh... Uh... Megamind is also, like, really good. Uh, just from, like, a, a, a one solid story perspective. And then, of course, I really did, like, uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2. I think 2 stands on its own. Actually, 2 is good. 2 is better than 1. But, unfortunately, I think you can't go into 2 without seeing 1. And then, at the end of the day, you got to go see 3. And I would, I would say 3 is, like, middling. People rag on Madagascar, but I think it's it's a it's a solid sort of uh, series. Ray Romano, yeah, maybe that may be actually you should. Why am I why am I sitting here? The amnesia one is called Clean Slate. Okay, okay. What is the okay? Well, first of all, let's look up Mooseport. Welcome to no wait. Welcome to Mooseport is a different thing. No 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 no. This is different. Uh, this is totally different. Oh, it was... Okay, okay. It was... Uh, Dana... Dana Carvey. Uh, winter robbing film. Winter robbery. There we go. I'm just putting words together in Google. Trapped in Paradise, 1994. Yeah, okay, it's got John Lovitz and Nicolas Cage. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay, here, here, let me look, read you the description. Uh, the plot synopsis is, At Christmas time, New York, New, mm, New York City convicts Dave and Alan... Fibro are paroled early and placed on custody with their younger brother, Bill, a restaurant manager. Dave and... A B -b 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 they ask him to drive to Paradise, Pennsylvania to do a, a favor for their fellow inmates. Basically, they do another robbery. While trying to get out of town, they get lost... Ba, ba, ba. The bridge is out. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Arriving at the house. Okay, they basically uh, squat with a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch a family who thinks they're they're um, they're relatives from out of town, and of course they you know. Okay, and then it's it's kind of heartwarming, yada yada yada. Okay. Now, what's Clean Slate all about? Uh, 
Okay, yeah, sure. 1994. So I don't think people realized how big Dana Carvey was at the time. He was, uh... He was in a bunch of movies. Oh, Overboard. I remember that one. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. where's the where's the Wikipedia synopsis? Okay, Wikipedia. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, Maurice has retrograde amnesia. Uh, do -do -do. What happened? He realized his recording made of himself. They keep himself in the know. He's a private investigator. Okay, so he wasn't a gangster. He was a private investigator. He was injured during the case. Don't rev he tells he tells himself not to reveal his condition to anyone. As he is a witness in the case against the man responsible for his amnesia. Okay, so it's okay, that's the the, the plot. Okay, so he he has amnesia, but he tells he made a recording of himself knowing that he would get amnesia. Okay, I actually got to see that movie now, because if it it has to involve like hypnosis or 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 like sci-fi whatever. Hey, Johnny Two by Four, how's it going? Um, what I'm doing here is is th this is the tail end of the project, um, remodeling uh, the princess. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just going over the pendant. I'm basically cheating. It's not really cheating. It's just cutting one corner. It's a traceover, but it's a traceover of a very specific uh, part of the costume. Oh no. Uh, just playing some Hitman. Ooh, nice. Okay, I gotta edit that. Um, okay. Do I play Smash Brothers? I used to play a lot, um, because I had that on... on my Wii and 64. And, uh, you know, the GameCube. Um, but no, I haven't played the new one. Because I never got a Wii U or a Switch or any of that stuff. Eh? Okay, what am I doing here? Okay. Perfect. Does the princess also... No. No, it's just a costume. Does uh, Wonder Rabbit love Prince Vorkin? Does Wonder Dancer? I can't believe I remember all those names from the cartoon... from the video game. 
all the different variations. Yeah, well, it's that anime thing. It's just like, oh, he's so hot. But yeah, it borderlines on like obsession, uh, you know, obsessive, ob obsessive compulsiveness. So yeah, this is basic. There's there's no shame in uh, tracing over a reference, especially if it's just like a like a logo or something. It just saves time. They should re-release Beautiful Joe. Um, yeah, I guess so. I haven't actually... Pl I played it once. On the GameCube. It was pretty good. And then, of course, they had the TV show. Which, like, ran for forever in a day. I always seem to remember that always being on. On the Fox box or whatever. I had a really good theme song. I should look that up. Thanks for reminding me. And then the girlfriend, what, Jessica was her name? In Shinagogo. That's right. That's what it was.
do 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 Hello, May. How's it going? You're playing Pokemon Sapphire. Cool. What's that one? Is that the that's the newest one, right? With the with the bike with the bike Pokemon. Hey, is that a Pokemon? Does it have any attacks? Is that like your one starter? Well, it can't be. I know that they they have other starters. So you get just like get you get two free Pokemon at the start of that game, basically. Uh you have three other starters. What? You mean you get, like, four Pokemon at the beginning of the game? What's my favorite writable NPC? I have no idea. I don't even know where to begin to even comprehend that question. My favorite NPC that rides on me is Mimir. crazy now. There we go. Not you, uh, my computer. Where the hell? Okay, no, 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 don't do this. Oh, okay, I see what it's doing.
It's an NPC that you basically ride. Okay, okay. Okay, hold on a second. Taking care of some business here. Come on. Uh, I want to pick the merge layer. There we go. Yeah, and I'm just trying to. I'm. They, they use purple for uh, the female mask color. I thought that was a little weird, but I just went with it. We're getting pretty close to the uh the cutoff plan and I think this might be it. Yeah, just cleaning up the, uh, the, 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 again, I have this set up so that there's five different, uh, blinking for her blinking animations. And then whenever I need to change something, I just try to add 
one layer and then copy it and then and paste it over and over and then make the changes where I need to. Yeah. I think this is it. Yeah. Come on. Is it going to start over again? Yep, it's going to start over again. Okay, never mind. Here, just wait. Go to the last one, then we'll go here, and then there we are. Okay, there we go. That's basically the semi-finished project. Uh, you can see all of our different eyebrows. They'll be shut on and shut off at the different layers. Um, yeah, I really dug the watermelon uh, leaves. I kept that. I have that in a special file in case I need watermelon leaves again. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this one. I will be definitely doing more of these uh, these remodels. I guess reskins, remodels for the different series that will come up. Her hips are a little bit... I was going to say her hips are a little bit slender. But I think that's just because her boobs are so big. Anyway, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, we will see you in the next art cast, and I think, uh, I think that'll be for, I don't know, I'm working on something right now, but I've got a bunch of them, I got a bunch of them in back catalog, so we'll see what we do next time. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to rest my voice a little bit. I was going to get straight into another stream, but talking for two hours is a little bit harder than I, I thought it would be. Anyway, uh, see you all in a bit, and uh, yeah, that's the end for this one. I hope you all enjoyed yourself. Bye-bye.